All rise, stand up. All persons having business in this criminal court, for the AR6, Helen, or the County of New York will draw near. Give your attendance, you shall be heard. Be seated, come to order. Back in the early 1990s, New York City was viewed by many as a city in crisis, a city that many referred to as ungovernable. And no place embodied that more than the area in and around Times Square. My stoop in particular was a crack emporium where uh, people sat and sold crack. The loud radios, the disorderly groups, the drugs, the prostitution. There were a whole bunch of quality of life problems that just weren't being solved by normal means. Or just the same people were cycling through the system again and again, and there was no progress. It was a matter of survival for the business community. And if we did not do something about it, I was despairing for the longevity of the totality of the legitimate theater in New York. Low-level crimes, while many thought were victimless, really did have victims. And the victims were the small businesses, as well as the theater district. And residents of Hell's Kitchen or Clinton, their neighborhood, their street, their block was the victim of the crime. The idea of a community court was that we would develop community programs that an individual would be giving back to in the same community in which the crime took place. It was a very exciting idea of finding the court intervention to be a moment of opportunity uh, to reroute a life. What we're trying to do is change sentencing practice. We're trying to drastically reduce the use of jail as a response to low-level crime, but also reduce the number of cases in which people walk out of court with no sanction whatsoever for their criminal behavior. We have a crew that goes out. It's called the Community Restitution Crew. Same day, next day. That's the mantra of the Midtown Community Court, immediacy. This was an opportunity for the defendants to give back to the community that they had committed the crime against, but it was also the opportunity for the community to say what they would like improved about their neighborhood. We do a lot of gardening, we, do, we clean up. Participants, they're able to see, you know, wow, you know, I, I've, I've taken care of, um, you know, 13 blocks, I cleaned 13 blocks and I can see a difference and it's really amazing. One of the things that I think makes the treatment in this court particularly effective is the immediacy. A person can leave the courtroom, go right upstairs to the sixth floor of this building and receive that treatment on the date that uh, the sentence is imposed. We have social service groups. We also have individual counseling sessions. We do drug treatment. We do uh, mental health services. I think the big principle that we were testing was can you combine punishment and help? What we wanted to do was send really two messages. One message was there are consequences to crime. It, there's no free ride here. But the other message that we wanted to send was that we were available to help. When I came out of prison, I went looking for work, but I would never find, I could never get hired because of my criminal background. I came here in October of 2010 to the um, job readiness program in Midtown Community Court. And we used to do the mock interviews. And you say, hello, good morning, my name is Anthony. And I would stand up and give you a firm handshake. Like I told you, look eye to eye. Don't chew gum while you're in an interview. Go prepare yourself. You know, it was it's a very good experience that I got here. New issues always come up in Midtown. We have to adapt and evolve as the community adapts and evolves. With regard to prostitution, years ago we weren't thinking about sex trafficking. Now that's a priority for us and we are trying to come up with a better response. 
I came to New York to live with my mother's sister and at the age of 12 she kicked me out and then I started living on the streets and uh, that's when I met my first pimp on 42nd Street. I got pregnant at 17 and I ended up getting a beating at eight weeks pregnant um, with all kind of weapons and all kind of bruises and even kicked to the point where I had a footprint on my stomach. The last time that I was locked up was the day before Christmas. And that's when I decided that I did not want to spend Christmas in jail having my daughter be with her father, which at the time was my pimp. The court is re-examining our traditional notion of just incarcerating people who are arrested for prostitution over and over and over again and instead trying to address some of the root causes. So there is a shift in focus to alternatives to incarceration that include group and individual counseling and service provision. When you meet somebody who you know is working for a pimp and you know is um, being hurt, whether it's physically, sexually, emotionally, the way to engage them is, where are you? Where can I meet you right now? The workers in Midtown Community Court, they really helped me to get the benefits that I do have now. And ever since then, it's been a whole lot better. Outreach. Joseph Tembo, Senior Case Manager, on Track Outreach. Every month, we invite members of our community into the court to discuss public safety issues and hot spots, law enforcement, prosecutors, defense lawyers, business community, residential community, all sitting at one table with the judge and myself to problem solve and sort of stay on top of what's happening in the neighborhood. We have experienced an excess of a 75% reduction in crime over the last 20 years in this area. Uh, that effort obviously is not done by us alone. It's working with everybody involved. I think the role of the Midtown Community Court in changing Times Square and changing New York City's image in the world is huge. Well, I, I think no one who looks at the data or the neighborhood about uh, relating to the Midtown Community Court can conclude anything other than this has been a real success. You know, by giving judges more options, more carrots, and more sticks, the Midtown Community Court gives defendants a better chance at turning their lives around and staying out of trouble. In 1993, when Midtown began, there were a lot of people who said, gee, what is this kind of new way of looking at, at, at the justice system? And our answer then, and our answer uh, now, is that we cannot succeed in serving the public if we're not thinking about what we're doing. What's the outcome after the court system deals with that case? What's the outcome for the person? What's the outcome for society? That's what problem-solving justice is all about. It's a cover-up. I had my trafficker's name on my hand. After I got a cover-up, it was basically just saying, you know, that I'm officially done with the life. I'm not tagged. You know, that I'm no one's property now. I'm actually free to bloom as much as I want to bloom. I came to this agency, you could say homeless, but I could go like this today and actually say, I got my own apartment. I'm a supervisor now. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of responsibility. You know, it's, it's not easy when you got a bad background and coming into a situation and having no job skills. And here you can learn a lot of things. You can learn little things, but those little things become big things in life. Like they see something in me. That's why I always keep coming back here. Because like I tell you, I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it wasn't for this, for this place.